you have a dresser in your house that needs a little facelift, that would be this one. Currently, it has black chalkboard paint on it, and it's been on there for about seven years. <laughs> so it's time for me to do something a little different. I'm going to be redecorating this one with faux leather and linen fabric. So, if you would like to follow along, these are the objects that you'll need in order to do this. First and foremost, you're going to need your PPE or personal protection equipment, also including goggles. Your hand drill, or if you don't have a hand drill, your flathead and Phillips screwdrivers. Also, your ruler, a box cutter, a water-based polyurethane sealer, water-based because oil-based polyurethane sealers will give your project an ambered finish and that is not what you want. Now I chose to get a clear satin because I do not want a glossy effect to my fabric. Also when you buy your polyurethane sealer make sure that you get a brush that is good for applying things that aren't paint. <laughs> so get a quality brush, okay? need some type of pencil or marker so that you'll be able to mark your new drill points, your new drawer pools. Also, the fabric that you're going to cover your dresser with. Decorative nail head trim and additional nail heads if you want to give an artistic look to it. To apply your nail head trim, you're going to need a rubber mallet, not a hammer. This is rubber and iron. Though this is completely optional, I would suggest getting a sand block so that you can sand your surface down, especially if it's glossy, so that you can make sure that the polyurethane sealer will adhere your dresser and your fabric together. After you sand down your surface, you're going to need a scrub brush to get all the dirt and debris off of it. And all to help you punch holes for your nail head trim. A heavy duty staple gun, your rotary cutter and mat, and whatever starch you have on hand. And of course, you're going to need the dresser. When you begin to sand down your surface of your object that you're going to be covering with fabric, please make sure that you wear a mask so that any particles that are floating in the air from sanding off do not get breathed in. Anytime that you sand something down that has been covered with paint, you risk the chance of having lead exposure. If you need more information on lead exposure, I suggest that you read up on it on Google. You know, everything's on Google. Also, make sure that you wear your gloves to protect your hands from any lead particles or dust particles as well. Wearing some old clothes that you don't really intend on wearing out in public would be a good idea too. As you can see, I am flooding like the Nile over here. <laughs> Basically, what I'm not trying to do is remove the paint. I am just trying to remove the glossy surface of the paint. Again, this has been painted with chalkboard paint for about seven years now. So, it's about time for a change. I'm also going to sand the sides and the front down too. Now that I've sanded down the glossy surface and made it pretty dull, I'm just taking the scrub brush to knock off the debris and dust. I'm not doing it with water or any other cleanser because I'm actually going to get started right away with adhering the fabric to the surface and I don't want the dresser to be wet. Also, what you will not see in this video is I removed the knobs off of the dresser drawers and I took those outside as well. Did the same process, removed the shiny exterior and dusted them off. After sanding down this dresser, I realized it had a lot of issues. One, it's old. Two, there are a couple areas where it has trim that actually stick out. From the dresser. This normally wouldn't be a problem if you had a more modern dresser. Like the Ikea Rast dresser, which so many people hacked <laughs> and either painted or put fabric on, decoupaged it. They don't have that problem because everything is flush with each other. So what I did 
is I took measurements of the dimensions of the dresser to make sure that I had enough fabric. Because the fabric that I bought, I bought on a whim, and I bought the last of it. It's a faux leather, pearl colored upholstery fabric that I found at Hancock Fabrics down in Cincinnati. And it was on closeout because I think it was like $8 a yard. So they had a little more than one yard left. Now upholstery fabric tends to be usually, I think usually, about 60 inches wide. So I bought it on a whim hoping that it would be enough to cover this dresser. Then I got to looking at it and I was like, it's not going to be enough. And then I was like, but I'm going to make it work. But I don't think it's going to be enough. So what I did is, after taking the measurements of the dimensions, I actually drew it out on the wrong side of the upholstery fabric. And I do have enough. But I don't have enough to mess up. Literally, I don't have enough to mess up. What I did was, measured each side, or measured one side and doubled it. And I measured the side from right under where the top of the dresser starts down to the bottom. And then from the front and wrapped it around the back. Another measurement I took was the top of the dresser from the back of it all the way down to this piece of trim here and underneath of the piece of trim. But not to this. This, 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 and this are five measurements of their own. Then I have this trim in the front that sits out about a quarter of an inch from the dresser. So I took a measurement for that underneath of it and then straight down to the bottom of the floor. So I have four different measurements that I took. Now I've got them written down here. I measured them out, measured them out on the back of the upholstery fabric to make sure that I had enough and I'm good. I've got enough left over to make a pillow. <laughs> okay, so now that all of that is actually drawn out, I'm going to get my rotary cutter and my rotary mat and cut them out precisely. The iron is already heating up. There's no water in it. You do not want steam during this process. And because this is a faux leather, I'm going to be using a piece of muslin on top of it, or it's actually a pressing cloth, because while it does have that leather look to it, using a high heat iron will make you lose that effect, unfortunately. But I'm going to see if using the pressing cloth will help to keep some of that texture in there, and so I don't just end up with the color. If it, if it ends up that I only get the color and not the texture, well, I knew beforehand. <laughs> So I'm going to get started on cutting out the actual pieces, then we're going to start gluing them back. This water-based polyurethane is to be applied in thin coats. However, what I found out with the fabric that I'm using is that the back side of faux leather is very, very porous, otherwise known as it's very thirsty. So it can be applied a little bit thicker that I'm applying it here because I actually am going to have to reapply another layer of the polyurethane in order to get the faux leather to adhere to the side of the dresser. Now I'm doing this inside my house. It does not have a very noxious scent to it, but you may want to use it in a well ventilated area if you're sensitive to uh, chemical smells, but I didn't have a problem with it at all. Another thing that you probably want to get, if you're going to do it inside your house, is a drop cloth. There were a couple drip drops here and there that got on the carpet, but I don't think anybody ever is going to live in this apartment besides me, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> this is where having extra fabric comes in handy. Unfortunately, even though I measured this fabric to make sure that it would fit this side, it was still a little bit off. Having enough fabric to lay over top of the piece that you're attempting to adhere and then cutting it away once you've got it adhered is the more wise thing to do. For the next couple of minutes, what I'm trying to do is get it to fit down to the bottom of the dresser, but also back up to the top. It's not going to happen. 
Another wise thing to do would be if you have a piece of fabric, make sure that it's large enough to wrap around the back if you're going to wrap it around the front. It gives it a much nicer, clean finish. Yep, all that pulling and stuff, not going to help this dresser. Nope. Even though this polyurethane sealer is an ultra fast drying product, it can still use a little help by the ironing. The heat from the dry iron helps to seal and completely adhere the fabric to the dresser. Using the press cloth did actually help save the faux leather. So I have all the texture still originally in the faux leather on the dresser, with the exception of when I press the faux leather onto the front of the dresser on those small strips in between in between each dresser drawer. The ripples that are on the front of that piece of fabric, that's from being improperly rolled and stored on the bolt from the store. That kind of has to work itself out and if it doesn't, you, that's just kind of what you got to deal with. But always use a press cloth when using any kind of polyurethane and fabric together just to stop your fabric from getting stained. I thought that using a box cutter on this faux leather would help to cut it so that I can get it to wrap around the front of the trim. Unfortunately using fabric scissors was better. Faux leather does not like box cutters and using scissors is pretty much more safe so I suggest Leave the box cutter alone unless you have normal fabric that can be easily cut with a box cutter or fabric that has been starched. Starched fabric will be a little bit more stiff and the box cutter will slide through it just like butter. Briefly, I'm going to show you here how I applied that front section down. I use much more polyurethane sealer here than I did on the sides because this stuff dries super duper fast and I have to move fast as well. Because the back side of the faux leather fabric is so porous, I ended up having to do this two to three times because it would dry so fast. This was some tedious work, you guys. Just know that if you ever attempt to do this, don't do it with a dresser that has this much trim on it. Don't do it on a dresser that's old. Don't do it on one that has had paint on it already. And make sure that you have plenty of time available because you're going to need it. <laughs> Here I'm just trimming some of the fabric that's going to be wrapping around the inside of the dresser which I'm going to be applying with a heavy duty staple gun. I do not suggest using your staple gun so that they're going to shoot somewhere. Make sure that your dresser is down towards the floor so that when you shoot the staples in, they go towards the floor. Only reason why I did it this way was to be able to show you guys uh, through the video. But please make sure that you staple down towards the floor and not towards your legs. Unfortunately, this part was very unnecessary. The strips that I cut to go across those bars that will be in between the dressers are actually too short. So I am cutting off areas that I wish I had known I didn't need to cut off because if I hadn't cut them off, I wouldn't have had to paint the areas where the strips were too short. But I did. Oh well. Very carefully and slowly, I'm going to be cutting the excess fabric from the corners. Now they should have met together with the polyurethane adhering the fabric to the dresser. Unfortunately, it didn't. So I'm going to be adhering that little corner that you see back there with crazy glue. That is the only thing that will close that corner of that fabric permanently. The polyurethane and I did not get along during the entirety of this project, unfortunately. But the crazy glue worked just fine. 
I suggest you go out and get some crazy glue as part of this project as well, just on the end case. Before you begin to apply your polyurethane sealer to your dresser drawers, make sure that you have starched and pressed your fabric out. Have it already ready and waiting for you. Make sure you lay it out flat so that it doesn't get any creases in there. Creases or wrinkles, you do not want that. The problem that I had with this process was I did not make sure that the fabric was going to be striped in the same measurement all the way down. So that's how I ended up with my stripes being a little bit off. I was too tired to do the right thing. <laughs> so if you are going to do stripes or any type of fabric that needs to be matching, I suggest that you set aside enough time and energy to make sure that everything lines up perfectly, which I did not do. And always make sure that you get your press cloth. As you can see here with mine, it used to be nice and clean. This polyurethane junk has completely messed up my pressing cloth. So this pressing cloth is now from now on for crafting. I'm going to have to buy another one for my apparel sewing projects. Once the fabric is fully adhered to the top part of the dresser drawer, I go ahead and trim the bottom part of the fabric that's going to go to the other dresser drawers off. And you don't need to make a large margin unless you want to wrap it all the way around the back side of the dresser drawers or if you want to use your staple gun to wrap it around instead of the polyurethane or any other adhering product. Remember, the polyurethane dries fast, so you need to move very fast. Still, though, I had to adhere this two to three times before it would actually stick down to the edge of the dresser drawer. But I like the final result. You just got to move fast, okay? Have enough energy, move fast. Here I'm clipping the corners of the dresser drawers and make sure that you take your time while you're doing this so that you don't trim off too much fabric. <laughs> Luckily I did not because this fabric had already been starched and was pretty stiff so it made it easier to cut. Now at the bottom there you kind of see where the polyurethane is coming through the linen fabric. Don't worry about that because once it dries for the most part it will fade. Just don't use too much and you won't have that problem. Here I'm just trimming with the scissors the side of the fabric. Again, if you want, you can wrap it around the back. I chose not to. If you don't choose to do that, use Fray Check to help save the fabric from unraveling. What I'm pointing to is the two holes that I made for my new drawer pulls. Make sure that you do that before you install your nail head trim so that you do not install your nail heads over the area where you want your new drawer pulls to go. This is the fourth drawer that I did. So I finally came out with a method that I liked, which was I wanted to measure out the nail head trim before actually applying it all the way down. It made the process a lot easier to do. Uh, for this process, applying the nail head trim, it took a half an hour per drawer. So this is our one and a half to two hours, <laughs> but it is the final part of getting this dresser together. Yes, Lord, thank you. Now all I'm going to do is apply the nail head to the first hole, but first I'm going to make a hole with my awl. It's a lot easier than trying to do it with a nail or a screw or any other object. That awl is perfect, but make sure that you use your mallet, your rubber mallet with it because your hammer will damage your awl. So I'm applying the first nail head and of course it jacked up. The top part of these drawers are really, really thin. They don't have anything so that the nail can actually go into it. So it was hard applying it to the top of the drawer. The side and the bottom of the drawer did fine, but the top of these drawers were awful. But anyway, I'm applying nail head to the first hole. Then I'm going to go to the middle hole. Then I'm going to go to the last hole on that top part. Then there are a bunch of nail head hole openings 
in between there, I'm going to wait until the very end to do those. I've applied very few nail heads up until this point. Now I'm just going ahead and making all the holes that still need to be hammered in with an actual nail head. You don't need to make sure that you go all the way through with the awl, just enough so that you'll be able to put your nail head into the hole and then you can go ahead and hammer it in. When laying the trim down, applying nails to only the first, middle, and last sections of your nail head trim works a lot faster than applying each nail per each hole. After this, I'm going to apply the new drawer pools and you'll see the finished product. Yay! Whew. So, this is the finished project. I know it's not perfect by any means, but thank goodness it's done. <laughs> Y'all have no idea how tired I am of working on this bedroom redecoration. <laughs> That's what happens when you have all these fantastical ideas and you don't want anybody else to help you. You want to do everything yourself so you can say, oh, I did this myself. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad it's done. <laughs> well, not the whole redecoration, the dresser. So what would I have done differently? Everything. The faux leather fabric, the incorrect fabric for this project. The back side of it is very porous, which means that it sucks up the polyurethane sealer like nobody's business. Most of the time, I had to seal it at least three times to get it to adhere. So I will never again do this project with faux leather. But I say that about every project I do with faux leather. Uh, the linen fabric, because it was striped, I should have taken a little bit more time to look at it so that I could have got the stripes completely, perfectly matched up. But like I said, y'all, I'm tired of working on this project, especially this one. It was not fun to do. However, I do like the way that it turned out. To complete these drawers, I actually used one whole row of the decorative nail head trim on these three with four little pieces of nail head trim left over. So this is beginning the second row of nail head trim and I still have got a really a lot left over on the uh, second row that I opened. That stuff is no joke working on, especially on these really thin drawers. Yeah, if you're going to do this project and you plan on keeping your dresser for a while, make sure that you get a dresser that has some really firm wood on it and that's good quality. This dresser... Probably if I ever change my bedroom again, which probably won't happen. <laughs> if I ever do it again, this dresser and I are parting ways. Me and this dresser are through. Um, there were a couple places where I did have to paint because there was not enough of the faux leather fabric. But I told y'all that. That's another mistake I would not make again. Make sure that you have enough fabric if you're going to do this. A lot of fabric. Especially if you're attempting this for the first time, you're going to need some extra. Overall, though, I really like the way that it turned out. I've got a plexiglass topper to go on top of here to protect the top from whatever I may sit on it, which is currently my 54-inch uh, television. But I hope you guys enjoyed this project, and I hope it motivates you to make something unique of your own. All right, so stay tuned to see the next phase of the redecoration. <laughs>